RCR with Paul Brennan, Reality Check Radio. So here is the statement released by Democracy NZ last night, Sunday evening. On behalf of the Board of Democracy NZ, we make the following statement. Democracy NZ was formed in March 2022 on the fundamental principles of democracy, unity and equality. We stand for freedom, for family and for farming. During the course of the past 10 months, we have announced a number of candidates. These candidates have come from a wide range of backgrounds and skills. Yesterday, referring to Saturday, the Board of Democracy NZ addressed an ongoing issue with a candidate who is unhappy with board decisions and governance of the party in general. This is not something we take lightly, but the decision as a board was unanimous. As a consequence, four other candidates have chosen to resign. We thank Steve Cranston, Kirsten Murphitt, Lee Smith, Matt Shelton, and Bill Diet for their contributions and wish them the very best for the future. They go on to say, we understand this might be an unsettling and confusing time for some, but it's not uncommon to have candidates decide to depart from a party before an election. We remain strong, united, committed, and focused on the mission we embarked on when we started this party, which is to fight for our country and restore democracy in a fair and reasonable manner. We will contest the 2023 general election in October this year. We have talented and dedicated candidates running in seats around the country who have continued to pledge their support for Democracy NZ and will continue to work hard for the very reasons our party's mission states. We thank you for your support. Regards, Matt King, party leader, and Danny Sims, party president. So that's what we know at this time, Monday morning. Of course, Matt King has been a guest on this program not too long ago, and many of you um, fed back to us what you thought about that. So we thought we'd try and delve into with what we know so far, what is going on here with Cameron Slater. Cameron, welcome back to RCR. Good morning, Paul. Okay, you just heard that statement. What sort of statement is that? Well, it's a nothing statement other than to say that they've got ructions in, in there amongst their membership, so much so that five candidates, have, one's been sacked and four have bailed out uh, in support. And it's it's this is just uh, a classic, you know, Monty Python esque <laughs> type situation. You know, where you've got the People's Front of Judea, and then you've got the splitters that have that have gone in another direction. And and this is what what you're seeing here. But I mean, just reading into this, you know, he's saying you know it's a common thing for candidates to depart before an election. No, no it's not, Matt. <laughs> it's it's just not. There's not one candidate either. It's five. It's five candidates that have disappeared. So what we're reading here is, uh, and we haven't seen what any of these people have said out there. There's rumours and innuendo and all of those things. But let's just deal with reality here. Five people are unhappy with how one how one person perhaps has been treated, and they're clearly not happy with what's been going on with decisions and governance of the party in general. This is all classic small party stuff that happens all the time. I think it was the impression among many that this was a viable option and, you know, it had a, a growing energy behind it and it was some it was a party that people were considering. But it turns out on the basis of this, behind the scenes, very fragile, just well, about to, to fall apart even. The people who think that democracy in New Zealand is a viable option for the election are addicted to hopium, right? They, they are hoping that things will come right. They're hoping that the media will give them a fair chance. They're hoping that Matt King can win in Northland. They're hoping that they can get 5%. And there's no plans to do any of that. And I, I've spoken to uh, Matt King about this. I said, you know, what are your plans to do two things? First thing is, what's your plan to win Northland? And his answer to me was, well, I just know I will because I was the candidate before. You know, I, when I was, you know, I won it before. And he he utterly believes and is convinced that it was bo his boyish good looks, his wit and charm that got him across the line in Northland when in actual fact it was because he was a member of the National Party. No other reason. You know, and you've got a, a four-way competition up there. Willow Jean Prime is... Uh, quite popular, apparently, from what I can gather on the ground. 
You've got Shane Jones, who's uh, who's looking to, you know, carve off some of those uh, disillusioned National Party people and people who have voted for Labor in the past that can't bring themselves to vote National. You've got the ACT candidate who's having a good old um, scrap up there as well. And then you've got Matt King. Now, what we need someone to do is to actually do a poll up there, a lot, a lot like the poll that was done in Auckland Council elections for the mayor, we had all these centre-right candidates. Somebody did a poll, showed that Wayne Brown was going to win and made the others all pull out and quit. Well, that's what needs to happen in order for somebody to get across the line that's not the National Party or the Labour Party in Northland. Um, but no one seems to be willing to, you know, cough up the five grand or whatever it costs for a, for a poll to do that. Okay, uh, let's say that happened. Who is the likely recipient of those who would be prepared to move in the face of of that information, knowing that it's just not going to happen, if you're a Democracy NZ supporter or a Matt King supporter? Well, the, <clears throat> I mean, theoretically, uh, people who believe in democracy and freedom and all of those things that they talk about, freedom, family and farming, theoretically, it should be the ACT Party. But David Seymour destroyed his freedom credentials with his behaviour over the Wellington protests. Uh, the only person who can really benefit from this uh, would be New Zealand First and Winston Peters. He's saying the right things. He's doing the right things at the moment. Uh, and the reality is he is the only small party that has a chance of getting over 5% in the next election. And that's not pushing Winston's barrow or anything. I'm just dealing with reality. Everything else is hopium. And, uh, you know, I love that term because the people who support all these minor parties, I mean, you saw um, yesterday on um, on The Nation or on TVNZ, whichever it was, uh, the guy from Top uh, going on about uh, how grand they are. And you've had, you know, a couple of media people pushing Top's agenda uh, in with their columns, et cetera. But top is only scoring, you know, a half of one percent. They're not even realistic as a as a party that's going to get across the line. So there's there's still a lot of people out there who are still believing that that hope is going to get them there, and it and it isn't going to get you there. Hard work is going to get you there. A plan is going to get you there. And I'm yet to see a plan from Democracy New Zealand or from Matt King or anybody associated with them on how they're going to first of all win a seat. And secondly, get 5%. It's 150,000 votes. They're just, mm. you know, you've got a whole lot of small parties that are all competing for that 150,000 votes to get to 5%. They're never going to work together. As I said, this is a Monty Python-esque situation where you've got splitters and splitters of splitters. And, you know, the problem with these small parties is that they're usually filled with single-issue people who are unwilling to compromise on anything. And politics is built on compromise and, a, and an ability to compromise. And then they're just too pure and won't do anything. It reminds me you know, really clearly of uh, the Libertarian Party, Libertarians Party that ceased to exist when they could no longer muster a quorum in a phone box. Hmm. So, you know, so... It, it takes big balls to stand in a party. It takes big balls to leave the party you're in and, and to go to the electorate. And, you know, if we look at the MMP years, we've had 27 years or nearly 30 years of MM, MMP, and only two people have quit their parties, held a by-election, and won. And those are Tariana Turia and Winston Peters. Everybody else who was in another party uh, and then quit and then formed a new party or didn't, that they're all written off. They're all gone. You know, they didn't. They didn't actually stand by their principles and take it to the voters as soon as they quit. Um, the old party. Those two did, and they won. Um, but there's there's only two. Everybody else has, has disappeared from New Zealand politics. What you've just said sounds kind of logical and common sense to someone like me. And given the times we're in and the urgency that many people feel, how do you explain that lack of common sense amongst the players at the moment. I mean, it's obvious there has to be some kind of unity. That's a 101 for projecting a, a party image, particularly for an election. Hmm. It's obvious. And still, obviously, some can't what, put away the ego or 
put away the purity for the bigger or the greater good or the bigger cause? But there never is a greater good or a cause, the cause. You know, like I'm involved in the firearms community, right? There's 250,000 firearms license holders. And everybody says, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll all, we've got a big voting block here and that we can all, you know, change the, uh, the impact of the election. We can really affect some things. But, but they never do because they're not organized. They haven't got a plan. There's right. no single representative group for firearms owners. You know, in the United States, they've got the NRA. And when they say they're going to hurt somebody at the ballot box, they go set about and do it. But nobody's said they're going to do that here. And that's a huge block of voters. But that huge block of voters is filled with people who will support New Zealand First, who will support the ACT Party. There's a good chunk that support the ACT Party. But David Seymour arrogantly assumes that he's got those votes forever. So there'll be some of them, like me, that are saying, well, I'm not, well, I don't want anything to do with David Seymour because when I talked to him about what he was going to do for firearms owners, he said he's not going to do anything for them. And then you have to take the man at his word. He's not going to do anything for them. So we've got a, another situation where you've got you know, the so-called freedom movement, which isn't actually a freedom movement. It's, it's not a movement as such. There's no leaders of it. There's no, you know, there's no cohesion. There's no central organized you know, sort of thing. There's a whole bunch of people who've got particular agendas. They might be anti-vaccines. They might be anti-mandates. They might be uh, uh, totally, you know, wanting an anarchy type situation where there's no politicians involved and we just get on with each other. And then you've got a whole bunch of other people who are, are on the periphery of all of that, but there's no cohesive argument. There's no cohesive group that's putting them all together. There's so many disparate groups. I mean, it, I, I know what went on uh, behind the scenes that led to Matt King creating his party, you know, and rushing out with press releases beforehand um, when everyone else was trying to work together. You know, so you haven't got an environment where everyone's going to work together. And again, you're dealing with hoping everyone hopes that they're going to work together because if you put it all together, they might get 5%. But there isn't a plan for that. And it's only 16 weeks to the election. So it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I mean, the reality is when it comes to third parties getting across the line at the next election, um, you know, it's a given that the ACT Party will get across the line. The Greens, they're slipping and marginal. And, you know, frankly, they're not focused on the, the uh, environment anymore. And they're focused on their hard version of communism and, you know, increases taxes and, expanding the size of the state and all of those sorts of things. So they're, they're diluted. Um, they're the small part. The Maori Party will should get a few, couple of seats. But the reality is that all these other parties that are out there, unless there's some sort of, you know, I hate to use the term groundswell, but unless there's some cohesive groundswell of organisation that can bring all of that together, it's just not going to happen, which means that New Zealand First is the one that's likely to get across the line. Winston actually went to the Wellington protests and spoke to protesters. He refused to speak to the media when he was there. He made it quite clear that he was there to talk to the protesters to understand what they were on about. And he's also had an epiphany about some of the things that happened after 2017, especially around the um, you know vaccine mandates and those sorts of things. And he realizes that, you know, Based on the information they had at the time, they did what was necessary, but they should have changed that when new information came to light. And now he's you know, very definitely saying, no, we should have let people have choices and we should never have had mandates and we should never have done these things. These have damaged society. And the other thing that he's also talking about is that we need to have one class of citizen. Not this, not this polarization that's happening, the segregation that's happening in society that Jacinda Ardern started and Christopher Hipkins is continuing. So I think he's got a lot of um, things that he can touch on that a lot of people are, have disquiet over. They're not confident that someone as wet and woke as Christopher Luxon is going to be uh, able to act as a bulwark against uh you know, these globalist type people. He, he's very definitely a globalist. He's very definitely wet. He's very definitely woke. And Winston is the person who's saying, no, we're not having this wet and woke rubbish 
in our society, and you know he'll bring some sensibility to government. I think. If you were advising Matt King right now, with all you know and some of what you've said just here right now, what would that advice be in the go aftermath and, of that? What my advice to Matt King would be to go and get a poll in Northland. Go and get a poll. Invest in a poll that shows that you're going to win and develop a plan around that because you're never going to get 150,000 voters, especially when you've got ructions like this. So the only hope, and they really are living on hopium, Democracy New Zealand supporters, the only hope is that Matt King can win in Northland. And and the only way he's going to gauge that is to get one of his donors, whatever's left of them, to pay for a poll and actually deal with reality instead of hopium. Cameron Slater, thank you. And we'll see you again, if not before, who knows, um, for the next uh, political panel this coming Friday. Thank you. Thank you very much. RCR with Paul Brennan, Reality Check Radio.